us really want to see an infection. And uh, this is a 230 kg patient actually, okay. He actually came from Indore and the reason he came from Indore is because he couldn't fit into the MRI. There was no MRI available in that side which would fit him in, you know, the weight requirements. He had a suspected cauda equina. He was admitted with my colleague, uh, my neurosurgical colleague and that was his MRI, you know, so large massive disc this is a with 230 uh, kg level patient, actually compression okay, he and actually came from indoor quarter compression the reason he so came from indoor is because he could he had to have surgery there was no mri available in that side which would fit uh, in uh, the compression fixation but unfortunately this is what he happened he had a suspected quarter uh, equina he was uh, admitted with my colleague and uh, uh, colleague and you can see the mri you know so you know see the sanguine discharge there massive disc uh, and really this is not what you want to see so what do you want to so do now? For the now? compression is he's so like 230 kgs. He had to have the first time was challenging to say the least. He had to have an awake intubation, he had to be flipped, and you know, he had needed a bioreactive table. And uh, so, usually, you know, to go back here is you know, going to be a nightmare. There. So, what do you do in this sort of situation? So, really this is not what you want to see. So, the so WAC can be a salvage, you know, you can open the wound up, call your plastic like surgical colleague, and first time uh, you was sort of. Open out the wound and then hope for the best. You have to have an awake and that's what was done here. After, you know, serial uh, whack uh, application debridement was done. You know, to go and back here is that's how the wound contracted. You can see the contraction of the wound in this sort of situation. And uh, the drain was left in. You know, the whack surgeon is likely to keep the drain in for longer time. Up, call your plastic surgeon. And uh, that's finally how the wound was And uh, so, you know, so also this has happened. I mean, I've had this experience in two, you know, 200 kg plus patients, you know, where after, you know, serial, they have got infected post op. Application and, uh, was done. This is another 72 year old lady. So you know, she had come actually with severe stenosis. And, uh, the drain was uh, like a blistosis. Like had a decompression with a fixation. Okay, uh, but uh, went home. You know, wound was absolutely fine. So this is and I got a call that this, uh, you know she is uh, sort of having gone into sort of urosepsis. Was so admitted in a hospital and, uh, elsewhere. And then unfortunately the wound got infected. You know, she came back to us and uh, we had to sort of decide what to do with her. You know, and uh, had a decompression with the fixation. Eventually we decided to put the back, open up the wound, do a little bit of the ward and then subsequently do a closure. Sort of with the help of plastic surgery. And that's fortunately we could retain the implants and that was her later. So, you know, how do you go about these patients? And, uh, because uh, it's very difficult. Now, the incidence of post-operative spinal wound infections can range from 0.5 to 20 percent. Okay? Of course, it is dependent on the case complexity, uh, the use of instrumentation, the approach. You know, procedure approach is more common. The time taken for the surgery, if there's extensive dissection, greater blood loss, and of course, if it's a revision surgery. Uh, so, now, how do you go what's the problem if you have an implant? Because, uh, the biggest very problem very is you can have colonization you know, and uh, it's an iris for inoculation growth, there's a biofilm formation and it's a barrier to antibiotics and the host immune response. Uh, there is uh, you know, a post op seroma, uh, it's more common in trauma and neuromuscular, you know, trauma patients, neuromuscular scoliosis patients. Now it's important to assess the risk factors. So when you are in the clinic you need to understand the patients who are at high risk, smokers, uh, obese patients, patients with malnutrition. Uh, you have to avoid a long hospital stay. Uh, Indwelling catheter again is a risk. Uh, diabetic patients with HbA1c more than 8, I mean, you should not be operated. You should try to defer the surgery till you have better glycemic control. Patients with renal disease, hypertension, uncontrolled liver disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and of course, patients with uh, So now, this is a pediatric patient. Now, in such a case, the VAC may not necessarily work. It's a question of having uh, inadequate soft tissue coverage. And then here, you know, uh, diabetic patients with a rotation flap, you know, which can be you should see that's been drawn out there. And the closure after that, that, okay, with the help of a plastic control. surgeon. Patients so it's important to work well in coordination. Uh, it's important to assess preoperatively. So it's critical uh, to assess so, so you don't have to face these problems later. Okay. In such a case, the and uh, work. It's a in small children, I try to avoid surgery uh, below uh, 20 kg as much as possible. You know, uh, you know because uh, if you have an infection in such a patient, it's very, very difficult to manage it later. So what about the VAC? So what's the role of the VAC? So I would not say that the VAC works in isolation. Assess preoperative. There is an incisional VAC available. It's uh, by Smith and Nephew. It's called a PICO. Okay. And this is a good idea to use if you are anticipating an infection. So in high-risk patients where you anticipate an infection, you can just apply this post-op. It's a nice battery operated system. You know, very very easy for the patient to be mobile. Okay. Then so there is a the regular vac? foam vac, so uh, you know, which is I would KCI, uh, which has an external canister, it's a little, uh, a little more cumbersome. Uh, uh, and then now there's, they have the irrigation vacs, which are, you know, basically the foam vac systems with irrigation, with antibiotics, children, and et cetera. And of course, the rationale for the use is, uh, especially with the, uh, 
TC5 extremis to decrease the potential space and, and remove the fluid foam back, uh, you know, to, to reduce the tissue tension and extend the lymphocytic area. area. Okay. Okay. So, what is the literature? Uh, so, we have good literature actually, this good studies done here. And basically, they found it to be very effective for reducing the rates of infection. And uh, the, uh, the mechanism actually is very clear. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's, it's so basically to reduce the bacterial load and reduce the edema. Okay. Okay. So what now what happens if you have a dural injury? Can you still do a VAC? So there is literature to support that a VAC can also be used. So in this series they had four patients with dural tears and they could still put in a VAC and uh, they just use two layers of the of the foam, you know, a granular foam and then a white foam so that you don't have a you know, for the dural leakage, okay. and, uh, and of course, you have to reduce the tension. So usually, you are putting it in 125, but in these cases, you need to do reduce the lactate. So there is and, uh, put it as uh, you know, not on the use, but in the series, there are four patients with dural tears, and they could still put in a vac. Uh, so and, uh, now this is an interesting study. They have looked at use of the incisional vac in high risk patients. You know, but just you sort of to see if it will help. You know, uh, of course so you have to reduce the tension. And they identify the high risk patients, and uh, they actually found good good outcomes with that. You know, uh, so my take home message really is uh, uh, pre optimize. You know, uh, pre optimization. Uh, you know, of course, a good so technical you know, exit you know, surgery like we saw yesterday from all the surgeons. Uh, early detection of infection. Uh, you know, in high risk patients because you know, talked about it. Don't procrastinate. You know, we don't want to accept an infection, but it's always important to identify aggressive treatment, a combination of vac debridement. Antibiotics uh, really is, uh, help, help from a plastic surgeon. You know, uh, 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 of course, a good technical execution.